I'm Dr. Edmund Sokowski and welcome to Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. Today on our show we have two guests that are going to be talking about something that's absolutely phenomenal. Let's welcome Dr. Dennis Courtney. Dr. Courtney, welcome back to Healthy Pets, Dr. Healthy Ed, Owners. Thank you once for your invitation. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. And we, let's welcome Dennis Jackson. Pleasure. Now, Dennis, we have the Dennises on today. Yeah, Dual we do. Dennises. So it's probably going to be a little tricky. So, so let's start off with uh, Dr. Courtney here. You, you are a phenomenal physician that's slightly out of the box. And I always say that about you, that you're slightly out of the box, meaning that you don't just treat symptoms and signs, but you actually look at the root cause of a problem and address a, a disease or uh, a dis-ease dis order in the body and get the body back to health. But you've, you've actually introduced the Pittsburgh area to something called stem cells. And that takes that whole process to a completely different level. Great heights, yes. What are, before we define what a stem cell is, and then later on in the show, we, we're going to expose the audience to something totally new and actually pretty phenomenal. Yeah, sure. But let's not jump ahead. Okay. Before we discuss what a stem cell is, what do we use stem cells for? Well, the first thing I'd like to say, Edmund, is you're so kind to say that I'm slightly out of the box <laughs> because I never looked at what I would do and is there anything that was slightly askew. No, my practice is very much different. It takes on an entirely different uh, goal and objective, which is to identify what the cause of that problem is and then literally to reverse it. And this is antithetical to conventional medicine as we know it, where, as you and I both know, drugs will diminish symptoms, but do nothing to the very pathology that causes them. And we and, and the folks that do what I do rail up against that. And we say, no, 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 this is not the way to be dealing with any medical issue. We're, we want to get to the root cause. You use the word root cause. And we want to be able to reverse it so that if the, if the cause of that symptom goes away, then the symptom absolutely goes away for real. Well, for the last almost 30 years, and I, th I believe I actually coined this if you look back in, in the records, and I'm thankful for allopathic medicine, the traditional medicine. Absolutely. It saved my life. It was also the cause of the problem to begin with. But I always determined that as Frankenstein medicine. And when I lecture and I throw that out to the audience, I always get this deer in the eyes look. What am I talking about? And Scare. I'm not knocking yeah. the medicine. What I'm saying is, it's kind of how you made Frankenstein. You cut it away, you sewed it back on, or you suppressed it. And that's how we made the monster Frankenstein. And we kind of do that in medicine. We, we don't address the root cause. We're not looking at really the cure. But you have ways now to actually do that. Yeah, I've been pursuing these various ways. We'll call them some alternative medicine, some say nat natural medicine, holistic medicine, a number of terms, but what it is, it is not pharmaceutical medicine. So look, we're the greatest uh, medical deliverers in acute care Absolutely. in the world. Boy, if you're, gonna have, if you're gonna have a wreck or you're gonna have a heart attack, this is the place, this country is the place to have it. Our acute care has no equal. When it comes to chronic care, however, all bets are off. We have no better, no worse uh, results than any other place in the entire world. That's a pretty big statement to make. So chronic issues need to be dealt with, I believe, differently, and that's that use of things that are outside of that box that everybody's so familiar with. And those things help support the body because the body is designed to heal itself if you feed it properly. If you do, if you do the right thing. Yeah. So when stem cells are mentioned, this has been a part of my practice now for five years. This is my fifth year anniversary that I've been involved in treating with stem cells. And these are miraculous um, ways of literally reversing pathology that may have been going on for 10, 20, 30 years or more and regenerating brand new and healthy tissue in its place. Uh, just think about that. Uh, that almost sounds like a, a, a fairy tale wish, 
But this happens with great regularity when using stem cells to treat a whole host of medical conditions and to take on disease at the point we find it, usually in people with advancing age, and they're having all sorts of aches and pains and other medical difficulties. To think that you can actually turn that around and regenerate new and healthy tissue and have their symptoms alleviated, well, you can see how much fun I must have in what I do. Well, I, I know you have a lot <clears throat> of, of patients that are very happy in what you do, and you were the first to really talk about stem cells in the Pittsburgh area. In fact, you did it on this very show uh, all those years back. And you also uh, are a regular guest on my radio show every Saturday morning that I have on AM 1250, The Answer. And we bring you on once a month to talk about what's going on and what's new in this new field of regenerative, regenerative medicine. And that's a whole new field. It's brand new. And you're not gonna find that in your average hospital or your average physician's office. No, you're not. And you're talking about t the ability to, to take, do, would we call a stem cell, well, instead of me defining what a stem cell is, would you please define oh, what a stem cell Oh, I have to define this so often. Uh, look, there are cells that we can harvest from the human body that are blank cells. Well, medically we determine undifferentiated. They have no identity. Yeah. I, I, I dispense using the big word, I just said, they're blanks. They have the potential to turn into anything, but they haven't yet decided what they're gonna turn into. So we harvest them, collect them, we cryo them, meaning we freeze them, and then the day comes when a patient asks to have some issue dealt with, and then we administer those cells and have them literally land on the, the tissue that needs all the repair. And upon landing, that blank determines to become a brand new one of those. That's a wonderful story, but it, it's a wonderful actuality because so that's what happened. When you say you harvest these, how is that done? What is that procedure? Where do they come from? Um, there are two main sources for stem cells. The original harvesting point was literally you. you gave up either fat cells or bone marrow aspirations. And then there was a technique to extract stem cells from those body tissues. And that's where it all began back in the early 2000s. And that's where it remained for at least 12, 14 years. So in that day, the only way you could get cells was from a patient and you gave those cells back to that same patient. That's where the word autologous came in. Is there a problem with, with those cells? Look, the, the, the cells are fine. However, as we age, the drop off in the number of these stem cells is so phenomenal that as we move into our advancing years, we literally don't have any stem cell. And in fact, when I tell you, I think I might, might have said it once before on air, at, after the age of 15, essentially, stem cells and the ability to harvest them, they're no longer available. You're over the hill at age 15 with stem Who cells. Who would have ever thought that a 15-year-old could be over the hill in anything? But when it comes to stem cells, yes. So it may be where it started, and thank God we had them when they were first made available. But there's a new world now of a homologous stem cells. These stem cells don't come from the same person and given to them. They're harvested from newly delivered babies that were delivered by scheduled C-section in mothers that have been screened for maternal health issues. So they're not actually coming from the babies. They're coming from what is thrown away or what is medical me uh, waste after the, the delivery the cord and the amnion are seething in these stem cells. Yeah. So technically speaking, you can take these blank cells and put them on an ear and grow damaged tissue to an ear? Theoretically, yes. So that same stem, stem cell could then become a nose or a finger. Yeah, because they're all anything. blank. Yeah. And they can turn into anything. 
the anything just happens to be what they end up landing on. So you're so right. Um, I don't get requests to repair ears. I do get a lot of requests. I'll tell you, uh, number one are joints. Uh, as we advance in age, uh, we're I'm not very much uh, surprised to hear that knee, hip, and shoulder joints, as we advance in years, become extremely diseased, arthritic, and that the solution ultimately has usually been remove the joint and put in an artificial joint. So to have surgery and then have some type of ceramic, metal, plastic, whatever, yeah, and, um, artificial joint. Thank God we've had that. Uh, our orthopedic surgeons are so skilled in doing that. But if anything has occurred in my own education, I've learned over these five years, that surgery is pretty much obsolete and unnecessary. And the public needs to know that so that they can do what make good sense. And the good sense would be, shouldn't surgery always be the last resort? That's what I preach. I think, I think any one of us have heard that and, and understand it. And in the world of chronic pain and these joints, the orthopedic world has it as its only resort, which by default makes it the last resort. And I say, no, no. No, this is not the last resort just yet. Stem cells should precede these invasive surgeries, even when they turn out great, and I, I would wish, wish nothing but a wonderful result. But you're going into having a surgery with all sorts of potential uh, elements and risk just being hospitalized by itself. A chance of infection, chance uh, of reaction of to medication, anesthesia. So you make surgery the last resort, and now what was an adage actually turns out to be something you can pursue as long as you know there's another step before you take such a drastic step, and that really should be stem cell. And, and that's pretty much with any of these disease processes. So the, the, these stem cells, this procedure you're talking about in the joints, can be done in the office. Not, you don't have to go to a hospital to oh, do it. Oh, there's that. no downtime at all. We see patients, um, and this is no different than a surgeon who may inject the knee with steroid. I think it's pretty common, by the way, in uh, the, the, the travel of a patient from first having a problem to ending up having a joint replacement. Oh, there's years of using steroid injections. They take seven or eight seconds. So it's what's injecting that counts. And I don't use steroids. I'm injecting that joint with those stem cells. With a solution. With a solution of stem cells. Now they're trapped in that capsule in the knee and they will land on all components of that joint and the blank cell now declares. It differentiates, you use the word undifferentiate. It now differentiates to move down that cell line. So that those billions, millions of stem cells that you inject through that one injection land on the different components of the joint and becomes each of those components. Whatever they land on. <coughs> so can that stem cell duplicate an injury, a, a diseased joint? You know, the, well, say you're, let's say you have arthritis. Does it cause the arthritis to become more abundant? No, no. Well, arthritis is a pathology that the patient has brought to the table. That patient was born without arthritis. But due to abuse, overuse, um, over time, these tissues become inflamed. And then once the degeneration begins, it doesn't really ever end. And we're on our way now to maybe that day when the joint replacement is going to be recommended. I think what I was trying to say was that stem cell is not going to duplicate that pathology. No, because there's no code. For, the only code that can be read by the stem cell is your DNA. And your DNA of today is no different than the DNA on the moment of your own conception. How many ever years ago prior that may have been, and so that code is the code that gets read. You've supplied the pathology. Your DNA 
only knows healthy. So that stem cells taking on and copying that DNA. DNA, exactly. And then producing that, that component. That component and that particular body part because the DNA for it exists right there. Now, I, I know you started life, your professional life, as an educator. You were, you were a teacher. A high school teacher. And a, as a physician, really, to, to have the word doctor in front of your name means teacher. So you continue on with that, but you do something special in the Pittsburgh area, and, and you conduct a, a seminar once a month. And in fact, as we start the month of February here in, in 2020 already, on, on the 10th, which is a Monday, you have a seminar, this, the Stem Cells 101 seminar. And I've got to suggest that everybody make their free reservation. There's no charge for attending this, but you have to reserve your seat there to attend this because it is absolutely an amazing informative lecture. I've, I've been to them. Dr. Courtney takes you step by step through this stem cell protocol, what a stem cell is, what it does. So I want everybody to know that this coming uh, February 10th, which is a Monday, is your Stem Cells 101. Stem Cells 101. So w what number should people contact to make that reservation? Uh, they can literally call my office to do so, um, and that number is 724-942-3002. The motivation for why you should want to come is this. Do not, and I want to underline the word, do not move out into the medical arena without being educated in how to shop for stem cells. Because if you move on, and the doctors are nice people, they're very intelligent, but the products that are available, because there's only seven companies in the United States that harvest these cells, and there's such a variation in the quality that the consumer really is vulnerable to getting a product that they really don't want. In that hour to hour and a half, I promise you, should you come to the 101, which I, I've now been doing for a number of years, you will leave completely empowered to be able to shop. And you will know if a stem cell should be permitted by you to be used. This isn't the case where it's whatever the doctor wants. I, I believe it's the first time, it, it is the first time, that it's the patient that needs to select the doctor based on what the doctor uses. You've got to make an informed decision and become an informed consumer, and that's what you're doing at the 101. You're not there trying to schedule appointments for people to come into your office. No, it is truly educational to allow them to lose that vulnerability and to take charge. So, so you educate them on what a stem cell is, what the procedure is, but then how to pick the right how stem cell. How to shop. And you actually have a list that, that your, oh, your yes. cl clients leave with that actually defines the questions to ask any we physician. We call that the Dr. Courtney's seven point checklist. There are seven questions that you just have to ask. And you would never think about any one of those seven questions but after that evening with me, don't, don't, don't leave that pamphlet at home if you're ever going to have a discussion with anybody about it because those seven questions will let you know whether this would be the product that you should allow to be used on your behalf. I haven't been ignoring our other dentist here, Dennis Jackson, um, and, and let's bring you into the conversation now a little bit. You're here specifically, Dennis, <coughs> to talk about something that we're going to talk a little bit later on in the show. But you're involved with Dr. Courtney in his office because the other side of your office there at, at Courtney Medical is HR, is it HR Regenerus? Regenerus is HRT. HRT. Um, what, what do you do there, Dennis? So I'm the VP of marketing, but I'm also the liaison for medications. So after Dr. Courtney sees the patients, I'll come in and see the patients to kind of funnel all their issues that they're having, everything that they're qualified for, whether it's vitamin injections, natural HGH therapies, testosterone, amino acid injections, if they have injuries, stuff like that, to kind of like sum up his time so he doesn't have to take as much time with each patient. So in your office at Courtney Medical, you're doing the stem cells, you're doing your other out-of-the-box procedures. Let's name a few of them, like, yeah. like uh, ozone treatments. Oxidation therapy, one of which is called ozone therapy. They're very rare to find 
treatment that has a lot of benefits to it. Um, but we use IV nutrients a lot. Um, we've got uh, external counterpulsation, which is used for circulation. Uh, many of these are terms that the public maybe hasn't even heard yet, but maybe a better way of saying this is just about everything I do is one of a kind. Microcurrent therapy, like, which Frequency is- Frequency-specific microcurrent, another one of a kind therapy. And Dennis works in the hormone division. Yeah, this division of my practice rescues me. We have a large number of, oddly enough, men who, are look, who have hormonal imbalances and cannot find their own PCPs willing to treat them. Well, I, I think a lot of physicians are afraid of hormones. I, I it's obvious to me they are. So we're quite comfortable with it. In fact, we have such a large number of people that, uh, that come to be treated that way, I need all the help I can get. So in a sense, Regenesis was born out of the need to help me because I want to be able to handle as many patients as I can, but I need to have, Dennis is one of my best coaches. Uh, once you meet me and I know that you're medically uh, able to be treated and should be treated, then someone needs to work closely with you to get you comfortable with that treatment. And that's where Denny really comes in. So he's, he's your li liaison. He's, I call him a coach. I don't know. Do you like being called the coach? Because Whatever you want. I, I look <laughs> as... <laughs> as, as at the end of the day, we're coaching these people. Not only are we pr providing them with medications that most clinics don't do, we're actually providing them with knowledge base on the product. So not only do they, okay, I'm taking this for this reason, we actually teach them on the product too so, as well, which helps a great referral base. And, but it, it's also part of that education. You're, you want your, your patients to be informed. To be. It's not, you know, do what I, what I say. Correct. There's and that's a like reason we're doing it. Most clinics are like, do this and... We always get patients coming in, like, I don't even know why I was doing this, I was doing Take this. Take an aspirin, call me in the morning. That's way, a lot, yeah. a, you know, that old saying, and that's kind of holds true. So our biggest thing is making people feel comfortable with the medications that they're taking. So uh, I just heard you call Dennis Denny, so let's refer to you as Denny, if Perfect. you don't mind. Uh, that way we separate Dennis Courtney and, and Denny Jackson. Um, you've seen patients hobble in doctor's office oh, yeah. and have these stem cell treatments and next time you see them, they're walking fine? To be honest, I mean, it, it, it seems to be working for some time after that too. So not only do they get progress within the first week or two, we're seeing progress up to two months or maybe even longer. So, so, so the, yeah, they're coming in a lot different on their checkup. And then from there, you know, months later, you know, they're coming in saying a lot of times they don't even feel anything anymore. So not only was a progression in whatever they needed to fix and healed, it was possibly maybe complete reheal. So most people come in because they have pain in their joints and they're having difficulty walking, difficulty One sitting. One aspect of my practice is absolutely degenerative joint disease and people trying to look for a way to avoid surgery and they hear about me or hear about stem cells and they'll find me. They will find me. Um, well, we're doing a lot to promote you, and, Dr. And you have very, and then you have helped you a know, lot to spread that word. I've personally seen people whose lives have changed as a result of your stem cell procedures, and I think it's it's so important. Not only do I do I know it's important because you're you're changing the lives of people, but you're doing this education process. And you know, I may not have a, a, a bad joint, but I'm sure I know someone that does. Everybody does. And we're able to then tell these, these people, hey, you know, go, go at least to this 101 and learn about what procedures that possibly can be done before you have that surgery. And by the turnout that happens, I know the message is getting there. And I don't see any other physician in this, this area doing that. There are doctors who are doing it. No, um, I know they're doing the procedure, but I don't see them doing the education process. Uh, that is my little yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy. I remember the teacher part of me just couldn't couldn't let this go. It had to be had to be done right. Right. And um, doing the one hundred and one, uh, allowing people to gain that kind of knowledge makes me feel good. So where is this one hundred and one held? So we hold these at uh, the WDVE building, and you don't live in Pittsburgh unless you know. On Green Tree Hill, there's this huge building, and on the side of it you see the call letters WDVE. We're on the fourth floor of that building 
uh, at 7 o'clock. And in this particular case, that'll be February 10th. 10th. Monday in the night, yeah. So to call our office to reserve a seat. Uh, we're flashing a number from time to time up on the screen. Very good. So that, so that uh, the we'll enable them to reserve that seat and come on out and spend that hour to about an hour and a half with me. And it'll be the best time, uh, best one hour you've ever spent in terms of insulating you and uh, allowing you to have the power that you don't have right now if you you or members of your family ever confront a medical challenge and you're looking for another option this may be that option come come get educated exactly. and that, again that's february 10th at 7 p.m uh, monday night so denny you're not only an employee of courtney medical group but you're a patient yes I was actually a patient first six years ago. So, so, so you saw Dr. Courtney as a patient, and then whatever happened happened, and now, now you're part of the group there. But you had a, a procedure that was recently done, and when I met you and you, you started to show me these pictures, I was literally stunned by what I saw. And so what I want to do right now, Dr. Courtney, is bring up Den Dennis, Denny's procedure and what you're doing now in the office. So. Okay. Tell us about that. Well, this 2020 is going to turn to be a great year because we have a new player now. Uh, the, the one that's been used has been doing great. Stem cells um, have uh, literally taken over my practice in terms of the attention I give it. But it was only recently that I learned, and by recently I mean in the last six months, learned that we could harvest something called exosomes. And it is these exosomes that now get all my attention and I believe all of the uh, enthusiasm that was once devoted to stem cells alone now is being moved into this new arena of exosomes which I hope to be able to, uh, to describe and clarify a little bit for our listeners today. So is your, these exosomes part of the 101 stem cell? Yeah, we, we, um, if, we, if we look at it just this way, when the stem cell is doing what it does, and we've simplistically said it's a blank, it lands, and it turns into what it lands into. It's a very simple story. In actuality, it's a little more complicated than that. And um, we have a, well, image. we're going to go to a break here in a minute, and when we come back, Let's look at we're, that gonna, image. we're going to look at that image and, and go into what these exosomes are and what the, the and how procedure him. that Denny came in and became a patient for, and, and the difference is absolutely shocking. So in your 101, you talk about these exosomes now. have to. It's, it's all the excitement now. Every, uh, everything I'm doing is how to use the exosomes more. That doesn't mean we, should, we need to do stem cells less. It's just that the, the utility and benefit from the exosomes. You can is, use them differently. Yeah. We'll be back at Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners after this quick break with Dr. Dennis Courtney and Denny Jackson. And we're going to be talking about hair growth and elimination of wrinkles with these exosomes. We'll see you back here in a few minutes. Welcome back to Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. I'm Dr. Edmund Sulkowski, and we're here with Dr. Dennis Courtney and Mr. Denny Jackson from the Courtney Medical Group. Before the break, I did put out a little teaser about what we're going to do in talking about hair growth and elimination of wrinkles, which I think is uh, a phenomenal thing that you're doing at your office now, something new. Before we begin to talk about that and show some things, this, we were talking about exosomes. And if we could bring up the first slide on the exosomes, I'd appreciate that. And Dr. Courtney can explain what an exosome really is. I was um, mentioning earlier that only within the last six months has it become 
I've become aware that we can harvest exosomes. And so the image that's on the screen right now helps to tell that story a little bit from the viewer perspective. What you've got are two cells, one in the upper right-hand corner and one in the lower left. The cell in the upper right-hand corner is a stem cell. The cell in the lower left is labeled a target cell. So that really means, you name it, that could be knee joint, that, that could be Cart kidney. Cartilage bone. Cartilage bone, whatever. Uh, but instead of the simplistic um, explanations of having stem cells land, and then whenever they land on, they become. In actuality, the, the true and legitimate story is that when a stem cell gets in close proximity with a target cell, it releases from inside of it really tiny packages of what are called mRNA, which stands for messenger RNA, and miRNA, which stands for microscopic RNA. And they're taken from inside that stem cell into the very membrane of that stem cell and then allowed to leave it and enter the cell of the target. Okay, so th that's somewhat of a carrier then? Is that a so the point to really make is when stem cells do what they do, they do so by virtue of exosomes. So it has always been the exosome that has allowed me to create the new knee joint or the new hip or the new shoulder. But because you could not harvest them individually, we use the bigger package. We use the stem cell itself. Well, you can just imagine my surprise, wonderment, and enthusiasm to learn that they could harvest the exosome alone and that they could be administered alone, which I look as a great advancement, only recently being able to be distributed to doctors like myself. So why do we want to have that isolated exosome? What do we want to use it for? Because in sheer numbers, um, I'll tell you that when I use stem cell, I use a vi one milliliter vial, and I'm guaranteed that there are, at a minimum, 10 million stem cells in that vial. That's a lot. That's a lot. I also tell you that in a one milliliter vial of exosomes, in the last batch I got from Miami, which is the source, there were counted, and they, count, they actually count these things, 623 billion exosomes. That's a lot more. So you're starting to get the picture here, more is better, and because they're so tiny, I mean, you could see on that image that the stem cell was pretty large. Now you can't see it with the naked eye, but under a microscope you easily could. But the real participant that makes it all happen are those exosomes. And they can be harvested all by themselves. And in doing so, it opens up a whole new avenue for their use that was unavailable to me while they were only in the form of stem cell. Two areas in particular. The first is, when I need to treat a joint, the stem cell did great. But what if I needed to treat a kidney? Well, this isn't working too well. And the reason is I have to give them IV, which is fine. Um, but all blood in a vein, in any vein, dumps into one vein. It's called the vena cava. That vena cava goes to the right side of the heart. And then all blood goes to the lung first. So those stem cells are going to land in those areas first. La not only land. Let's use the word trapped. Now this is fine if you have a lung disease. And there are many patients that their COPD was greatly improved, if not completely reversed, through the use of stem cells. 
but any other organ other than the, the, the lung, we have a problem. I can't get the package to the zip, I say the zip code, that needs to receive them. So it's a delivery problem. So with these exosomes being so small, nothing stops them. When they're administered IV, they're going right through the lung. And they're on their way to wherever they need to go because they know where to go. And they're going to find that pathology. And they're going to find that pathology. Can you see what avenues that opens up where joints were fine? We, and you're great. still using stem cells for joints. And we're still using stem cells for joints. But when it comes to every other medical anomaly outside of the joint, no, exosomes are the, are the choice. So in particular, you're using them for two main reasons in the office. If we could bring up the next slide. So not only has the world of disease have a new person to be able to help, women and men have now come to me because they're concerned about some cosmetic issues. I have women, a lot of women, that come to me and are very much concerned about wrinkles in their face. And believe me, the age of the woman that comes to me, she's in her early 30s. And as I look at her, I don't really see what she claims she sees. And you know what? It doesn't matter what I see. It only matters what she sees. And so I have a couple of slides I brought because we're able to administer exosomes topically. And the picture on the left, I, I say this is already an extremely attractive young lady who wasn't happy with herself. And I can see the difference, however, in what happened within one month of getting those topical exosomes. Yeah, you, you can, especially around the mouth. There's, it, it just, there's a much more youthful appearance. Yeah. So to that young lady, the this was extremely successful. You can see it in the forehead and you, I as well. Yeah. So I brought that along as an example of how exosomes can be used cosmetically. Another slide, if you can go to the next one, is another female, similarly with issues regarding how she thought she looked and here again, using exosomes topically, we were able in one month to get what I believe are obvious changes there. And she's completely happy with those changes. And this now is not turned into two. The numbers of women that are coming to me and are very anxious to move into this arena, I believe in 2020, going to be knocking down the door at them because they really, well, up till now they have all sorts of cosmetic procedures. They do microneedling to themselves. They put hyaluronic acid on themselves. I think they actually get a benefit or they wouldn't be doing it, but in nowhere is somebody actually using exosomes to regenerate brand new understructures. The collagen level and layer is completely redone. So th those procedures you were mentioning are temporary. This is a permanent procedure? This one isn't gonna go backwards. I think it's fair to say that I'll see these women again because they're gonna be just as critical of themselves four or five years from now. And they're coming back because they'll have seen another area of their face that they feel is an imperfection and doggone it, they're going to want that to be dealt with. So you can isolate different areas on the face. Exactly. So this procedure, and you say topical application, you're, you're rubbing something on the tissue? So what we have to do is first, we have to microneedle the skin. Which is what's we have microneedling? To take it sounds and make small, uh, thousands of very small holes in the epidermis. But that's the top layer of the skin. Top layer of the skin. There are no blood vessels in the epidermis. Therefore, there is no bleeding. But what happens is the needles themselves go down to the depth where the dermis exists. And at that level, 
inflame the dermal t tissues. So when you're done, what you have in these cases is a woman who looks like she has a sunburn. There's no bleeding. There's just this burnt look. Well, the reason why she looks sunburned is all the under tissue is inflamed. Now, put the exosome topically on the skin and it is driven to the inflammation. The inflammation attracts the exosome and has it land where it is to do the most good, which is in her collagen layer that needs to be tightened up. We're going to regenerate a brand new collagen layer. She's going to get the effect she's looking for and it now becomes the medical procedure that it needs to be because only a doctor can do that. And that's why a baby skin is so so smooth is because of all the collagen. Oh yeah, uh, there are attributes to that young skin that we lose as we advance in years. So you have a machine that does this microneedling? It's a small device, believe you me, it's nothing complicated, but it allows a cluster of needles, in fact there are 12 of them, that just come out, go into the skin, and we're attracted. And they do this at a very, very fast rate. To do the entire face, if we're doing the entire face, probably takes, I don't know, 15 minutes. That's not very long. Is, is there discomfort involved in this? We use a topical anesthetic that blunts sensation. I don't think it's completely anest complete anesthesia, as in my profession as an anesthesiologist, we, we would really pride ourselves in, but that they, I've never had a woman uh, not continue with this. They say things like, keep going, don't stop, and I don't stop. Uh, and then it's over in the 15 minutes, and then we're having good results. By the next day, by the way, although we don't want them to touch their face on that day, by the next day their sunburn is gone, and we already start to get those good results. That's in a day. The pictures you see up here are where we end up in a month. So the one month point is it. And, and so you, th these were younger women that didn't have a lot of, of heavy wrinkling. You're starting to see older women doing this procedure. I have had older women come to me. Now the wrinkles that they present to me are much deeper. And so I've looked at their before and after pictures and there's a tremendous change, but the deep wrinkle is going to take, if we're going to look to try to remove it, this is going to take more time than it did in that 30 year plus female where the, it was just such a hairline thing anyway that was easily able to be addressed. The pictures you put up, Dr. Courtney, showed these women looking refreshed. You know, they, look, they, they do. They look refreshed. I'm curious to see what happens when there are actually real deep wrinkles and how long it takes for those to soften. And do you think people with deep wrinkles, it will require more treatments? I, I actually believe they, they will. Uh, I am happy that what I see at the end of one treatment, but there'll be many more. And I think 2020, maybe somewhere in the mid-year, I'll be able to bring you pictures of more elderly patients over a course of maybe multiple treatments. This is an exciting year for me um, because a new group of patients that are coming to me are opening up an avenue of pursuit I never even considered before. And in fact, you actually can be changing their lives because if they're feeling self-conscious about the way they look and suddenly they, they feel much better about the way they are, their whole lives are gonna be impacted. They are very much concerned about how they look and I, I'm, I'm for them whatever they feel they need, we can now do, and they're willing to do it, and they're very pleased with the result. Can you we put up the next slide? So, not only do women and their faces come to me, I am overrun with men who are coming to me due to hair loss. And so, what we have here, this particular slide is a doctor, he's a doctor from Colorado, and he's actually a personal friend, I know him very well, and the top left is where we started with him, 
And so he has, so, he has thin hair and a bald spot. Uh, yeah, uh, pretty much a large bald spot. And so the same kind of micro needling exists in the scalp. We're going to make those small little holes, and then we're going to apply the topical exosomes. And now they're going to be going to the level where the hair follicle exists, a hair follicle that may be dormant, a non-functional, will now regrow and start anew. And so the remaining pictures, the bottom left, I believe, is at one month. And then the picture on the right, uh, that last picture before you flip to this one. Can, can we go back one? Go back one is where he was at the end of three months. So I think what we're going to find out with our doctor is at six months, he may want to do another treatment. Well, you you can see there's there's magnificent growth. There's hair magnificent growth, there. growth. Yeah, but and, and, and if it, he's happy with it. We're fine. And it looks to be uh, hair with color, not just gray hair. It it is young and youthful hair, absolutely. So we can see that bald spot is is much less, in fact. Well, I know he's very happy with the results because I have a chance to speak with him and I know him, uh, and he doesn't mind me using it. But I believe this was the first case we ever did with exosomes and we had to turn out this well. So you basically started the experiment with the hair growth and, the, and, the, and the wrinkles with these exosomes. So you're, you're like on the forefront of all of I'm this. I'm on the forefront of the forefront because the, the product that's used, this topical exosome was only launched on July 29th, uh, six months ago. So all this is coming to me so rapidly. I'm enjoying myself. I'm having a great time in helping people get to where they want to be, whether they have severe, terrible diseases or whether cosmetically they feel they need to have a change. So this is what leads to our next slide. If we can put We're the next slide We're finally gonna up. get to Dennis. Dennis, who's around me all the time, is representative of a group of men who have been bodybuilders for, a, for how many years have been doing it, Denny? Hmm. Well, three, four years. How long? Three to four years. Three to four years. So in the course of that, uh, a lot of these uh, gentlemen use s steroids and testosterone to help get the muscular uh, uh, look that they're looking for. What they don't count on, however, is that there are estrogen side effects to taking this testosterone, which one of them is loss of hair. So what I now have because I treat so many men with hormone that have been doing it for themselves on the black market for years, I now have them coming to me saying, I'm feeling really good about the testosterone, but I have no hair. And so they're lined up around the block, and we had to do my first patient, my first patient, and we chose Denny. Okay, so let's, let's have Denny describe the bottom picture. So Denny, it's you. On that bottom picture, you came to me one day and you said what? Well, first, originally we started with stem cell. We did try to stem cell, and it worked very minimal. Um, and yeah. so that's where I was standing on that bottom picture. So again, you think that was probably the particle size with the stem cell, Dr. Courtney? Yeah, just, it just can't get to the right level in the right amount, in the right numbers. So, you know, I, I mentioned on social media and everything I was doing it and I did not post about it after because it was, wasn't enough. So about a year later, we found out about the exosome treatments. So I was gonna be the first one to try it. Um, so, so that bottom picture, if we can keep that up there, that bottom picture- Is day one and- um, Before. That was before, picture, you, before you did it. Correct, and then the second picture is actually day seven. And then one day week 14. later. So, so you did the micro, the, the, the micro needling. Micro needling. Correct. And then you put the rub of the the top of the the topical exosomes exosomes and that's that's how many days one you week said? later it's one week later and then day 14 and then day 30 up top so so the third picture up is day what 14 look at the remarkable difference between the, the originating picture and the the one week and the two week it's absolutely phenomenal what and then what's the top picture that's 30 days so 30 days later you had that much hair growth yeah i was kind of shocked and that's the natural color of your hair is coming in. To be honest, it was, I, I had like highlights in my hair from 
doing professional wrestling, I was changing my colors, and um, it actually brought back the original hair color. So not only did it grow the hair, it actually rejuvenated my, my hair that I had on my head that was dead. When I saw this, and that's I think when I first met you, and you you just showed me those pictures. Honestly, I'm just running like, around showing everybody. You were like beaming. <laughs> you were beaming, yeah. actually. I, and I asked you to send those to me because I went around showing people these pictures, and they're, they're in shock. Yeah. Absolute shock. You can see the thinness of your hair at that bottom picture and then the thickness of the hair at the top. Now, you've cut your hair since that, that photo. Yeah, I would have never cut my hair this short um, being where it was on the day one before this all happened. It would have just uh, showed too much of my scalp and wouldn't have been comfortable with it. One, one application you've done? Yeah, only one. It's Pretty absolutely good. amazing, Dr. Corey. It, it's really fun to be able to do that for somebody. Um, but what's happened now is Dennis put himself up as the guinea, guinea pig. pig. <laughs> but what's happened is all of Dennis's friends, because he's in a bodybuilding culture, and they're all in a similar set of circumstances where they're looking great, but their hair is very thin and sparse and has its areas. And so now they're lined up. Yes, I made one post. I think we had 14 people schedule appointments. Yeah. And now we're up to like 20 people, but we're waiting on uh, the new applicator that we're using to uh, move forward with them. You both were on Healthy Pets, Healthy uh, People, my radio show, and we were talking about this. And nothing speaks more than a, than than the a picture. You know, it, it, it's absolutely amazing. And I was actually showing this to a hairdresser, Diana Mascara Crooks, and she was absolutely astounded. And then I told her you were doing this with, with for wrinkles on the face, and she says, I got to see those pictures. So uh, I, I think that you've opened up a whole new, a whole new box here that, that can actually change and help people with their appearance. I mean, I, I think, you know, what, what's some of the biggest complaints for, for men and women is loss of hair. I have a number of women who've come to me and they also want to be treated. So I don't want to say that it's all men. No, no, there are women and it's terrible for them. Um, it's, it's not socially acceptable as it is with men. They yeah. are very much concerned and their responses are expected to be exactly as they had been for the men. And both hair replacement, which is a, if, if you do plugs or so forth, that's a, proced a surgical procedure. That's a surgical procedure. So are facelifts, and if you're able to use these exosomes to accomplish that, you're again doing that out of the box thing and preventing surgeries. I think that's true. Uh, and look at the fun that I'm having in dealing with people who just feel that much better about themselves. I'm afraid it's going to get tough to get in your office here, Dr. Courtney, ah. to keep this up. I think the biggest thing is is getting those people away from Botox that could cause harm and now getting them into something that's more natural reproduction. Yeah, there, have, there have been no studies on, on long-term uh, Botox use. But the women are doing it. Yeah. And they do Botox and they do fillers. And there have been a number of them that have come to me and said, look, we need you to get going with this cosmetic stuff because although, and I, I felt that they were extremely attractive, whatever that Botox was doing for them and the fillers, but she was, I'm thinking one woman in particular said, you see this? In three months, this is gonna all be gone because it breaks down. It breaks down, right. And I have to do it again. And then she said something else. She said, and I'm never not gonna be doing it again. So when that three months comes around, that's another $1,500 on my credit card. Well, the minute you stop doing it, you're going to age pretty rapidly. <laughs> and so they, they just could never afford to not keep it up. And so now we're hoping that with exosomes, this is not going to reverse. If they decided that they wanted to do future treatments, it'll be because time has advanced somewhat, but in terms of many months to years, and now they want to take and do another step. That's a lot different than having to wait for three months to do your Botox and your fillers. Absolutely. And, and those aren't the easiest procedures either. Do you think if Dennis did an, another pr pr procedure here that it would even come in thicker? I'll let Dennis decide. I'm, 
Um, I believe that wherever I end up utilizing the exosomes, I'm going to have hair grow. And so if he would ever get unhappy with sparseness of, of hair, he has that option. And I think we can uh, lose. I think the biggest thing it's going <coughs> to attach to the other hair follicles and multiply. So now since I have more hair follicles, it's only going to multiply more. Did you feel any tightness in your skin afterward or anything like that? Afterwards, no, not at all. And it wasn't a very painful procedure. It was more like pinching, like plucking your eyebrows almost. So, so th in 30 days, that's a lot of hair growth actually, because hair Extreme. grows how much in, in, a, in know, a month? You know, I thought, I thought it was going to be peach fuzzy. Uh, I was perfectly prepared for that. I didn't, but it wasn't. These came in in fully mature hairs, no peach fuzz and fit right into his own hairline. You know, th we're at the end of our show, Dr. Courtney, and we didn't get a chance to talk about your eye protocols, so I want to mention it, that on Fe February 11th, the next day, which I is thought. Tuesday, after, uh, the day after the 101 seminar, you have a seminar on your eye protocol that treats eye diseases at the back of the eye, which aren't treatable a anywhere yeah. in, in medicine. So you can call to make that reservation as well, and it's free. We'll have to get you back to talk about your eye protocol treatment. But I want to thank you both for, for taking the time thank out you, of your, out your yeah. obviously busy schedule to come on to the <laughs> show and inform our, our audience about new procedures that can really change people's lives. Thank you so much, Dr. Dennis Courtney and Denny Jackson from the Medical Courtney Group. Thank you. Hey, I also want to thank Tucker for being such a good guy here on the really TV. really a good guy today. Yeah, he was. He always is. Remember, a healthy pet is a happy pet, and when you're healthy, you're happy as well. Now you can even look good <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with the expertise of Dr. Dennis Courtney. We'll talk to you next time on Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. And remember, you can hear me live every Saturday morning with my guests on Healthy Pets, Healthy People on AM 1250, The Answer. Bye-bye.